The men police say shot five people in the gas lamp quarter. Killing one of them was sentenced in court today. We'll have details. Plus, we're back in court for day six of the Larry Miliete preliminary hearing to determine if he will stand trial for his wife's murder. A single engine plane made an emergency landing on the ocean in Carlsbad. All three passengers got out safely. We're breaking down what we know. And if anyone can break San Diego's cold spell, it's the two leads from Disney's Frozen, Elsa and Anna. And you'll meet them coming up in the Zevely Zone. You've probably heard it before, but is it really true that we use only 10% of our brains? Tonight, we verify. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. The gunman in a shooting spree in the gas lamp quarter that killed one and left four others hurt has been sentenced to multiple life terms in prison. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. 34 year old Travis Sareste was convicted of first degree murder for the 2021 shooting death of 28 year old Justice Bolden. Justice was a parking valet who was shot and killed in front of the Pendry Hotel. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes is following the story for us. She joins us live now. Kirsten, today's sentencing included pretty emotional victim impact statements. Yeah, it was pretty emotional inside that court from what's for what's being called the gas lamp shooter. Now, Sharesta was also convicted of attempted murder for four other men. Today, he received four life terms in prison, plus 175 years. Now, I want to share with you some of those victim impact statements, but I got to warn you what you're about to hear may be pretty difficult to listen to. I remember all of it. I remember looking up at the sky and slowly fading in and out of consciousness, mouthing the words, I, ca I can't breathe, help me, and looking down at your chest to see the blood rushing out and not knowing what just happened. Vincent Ghazani was vacationing in San Diego when he was shot in the gas lamp quarter. Then your mind quickly rushes to the worst, knowing that you're probably going to die and cannot breathe, thinking it's only a matter of time. Prosecutors say 34-year-old Travis Sharesta wandered downtown on April 22nd, 2021, and started shooting random victims with a ghost gun. 28-year-old Justice Bolden was the first person shot. It's been such a loss to no longer have him. Justice Bolden's mom, Denise, shared with the courtroom and Sharesta how hard it is to lose her son. You took away one of the true loves of my life for no good reason. You hurt me. You hurt everybody that's sitting here. And you've ruined your own life. I hope you're happy. Several members of Bolden's family addressed the court asking for the maximum sentence. Bolden's sisters describe how close they were. Joseph was my best friend. He really was just the best brother. I can't imagine living the rest of my life without him. I so wish right now that he was here to comfort me now. He was, he was my confidant. I, f I felt like I could tell him anything. The man who decided that his life wasn't worth it will never understand what it's like to love the way that we love justice. If he did, he wouldn't do this. Court documents say Sharesta walked past a group of tourists during the shooting and told them to salute him. Prosecutors say once they complied, he quote, let them live. Two women testified that when he walked past them the night of the shooting, that he's told them, don't worry, I won't shoot a girl. Again, he has been sentenced to four life terms plus 175 years in a state prison. Reporting live for CBS 8, I'm Kirsten Holmes. Back to you. The judge in Larry Miliete's preliminary hearing repeatedly objected to defense questioning today. Miliete is charged with murdering his wife, Maya, who has not been seen in more than two years. As CBS 8's David Gottfordson reports, Maya's brother, as well as a co-worker and friend of Maya, endured hours of questioning on the witness stand. And you would ask around. Cross-examination of Maya Miliete's brother, J.P. Tabalanza, started Thursday morning with the defense attorney yes. suggesting Maya voluntarily abandoned her family. Did you at any time entertain the thought that perhaps your sister wanted to go somewhere and she didn't say goodbye to anybody? No. And it soon progressed to whether Maya had an affair with a co-worker. 
Mr. Miletti told you that he caught your sister cheating and having an affair with another man? Yes, he did. The cross-examination went on for hours as the judge repeatedly sustained objections for irrelevant questioning, lacking foundation, and beyond the scope. Counsel, wrap it up. You've got a new area that you want to cover, something that, that the prosecution uh, covered on direct and you haven't gotten to find. Otherwise, I think you, you, okay. you've gone over every aspect of this direct. On redirect, the prosecutor responded. Would your sister have left her children? No, I don't think so. Would your sister have left you and your siblings? No. Would your sister have left your parents? No, especially with my mom's help. After the lunch break, Christine Timmers, a co-worker and close friend of Maya, took the stand. She was definitely moving towards, more and more towards divorce. Timmers testified for several months in 2020. Maya would go back and forth on whether she should leave her husband. She just explained that I still love him. Obviously, he's the father of my three children, and I love him for that. During a drive back from Temecula, Timmers said Maya told her Larry had taken control of the couple's investments. She had asked him to please don't touch certain ones. These ones are what she considered safe and for the kids. Um, and she was angry that even those ones that she had specified, he'd reinvested into um, Bitcoin or crypto. Then in mid-December of 2020, she said Maya finally opened up about her fears of getting divorced. I asked her, okay, so what is it? And through tears, she said, I'm afraid that Larry will hurt the kids to hurt me. In court today, we learned the last te text message that Maya sent out to her friends was on the evening of January 7th, 2021. That's the same night she went missing. She was telling her friends she was worried about her children and the COVID pandemic. David, this is going into two weeks now of this preliminary hearing. When can we expect this thing to wrap up? The prosecution said today they have about five witnesses left, so the case is expected to wrap up maybe as early as Monday of next week. And then we'll find out if this goes to trial, which seems very likely at this point. David Gofferson reporting live for us. Thanks, David. We now know the name of a woman stabbed to death at a pharmacy in a college area earlier this week. Police say 66-year-old Mary Ellen Carter was attacked by a, quote, workplace colleague on Tuesday. Police say officers shot and killed that co-worker later that night at a home in Crest. His name has not been released, but we know he was 77 years old. We're told he was armed with a shotgun and that officers tried to subdue him with a beanbag gun. But when that had no effect, they say they were forced to open fire. We still don't have any motive for the stabbing. Police say Carter and the man were either co-owners or co-employees at the store where the stabbing happened. But that also has not been made clear. Tonight, the city of San Diego is dispatching more crews to deal with the increase in potholes you've probably noticed driving around San Diego since we've gotten all that rain. Earlier today, we caught up with one of those crews fixing the trouble spots along Balboa Avenue in Claremont. Normally, up to nine two-person teams are available for repairs, but now the city says about 150 employees will be assigned. City officials say the storm has increased the daily average pothole reports from 200 to a backlog of more than 1600. Seems like there are about 200 just on Balboa alone. If you need to report potholes, you can do it on the city of San Diego's Get It Done app. And if your car is damaged and you can document all of that damage, the location and all that information, you can file a claim. We've put that information on our website, CBS8.com. Just hours ago, President Biden toured some of the most storm ravaged areas of our state. The president arrived here in California this afternoon where he took an aerial and ground tour of the storm damage from the past several weeks. In the beach town of Capitola in Santa Cruz County, the president promised help for those who've suffered losses. The extreme weather is blamed for at least 21 deaths. We will have much more on President Biden's visit coming up new in our second half hour.
Three people on board a small plane are safe after an emergency landing in the North County. We're told engine trouble forced the single engine plane down right there in the waters off Carlsbad State Beach. It happened just before 8 o'clock this morning. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol has details from Carlsbad. Any landing you walk away from is a successful landing, especially one made on the ocean. So I do want to show you where the plane is right now resting on the sand. You can see California State Police starting their investigation. We also spoke to Carlsbad Fire about their response. Speaking with the pilot, it sounds like they lost their engine for one reason or another. The, the three folks that were on board were treated by my fire personnel and elected to not go to the hospital. Now we know the plane was coming from Montgomery Gibbs Airport. A decal on the plane says learn to fly San Diego. So I reached out to the flight instruction company for confirmation. Haven't heard from them yet, but I did find the exact plane and tail number on their website. It's a four seater single engine Piper Aero 200 horsepower complex plane. According to a Carlsbad Beach Park aide, the plane was flying north when they noticed it was gliding above the water. The front propeller wasn't spinning. They said the plane landed on the water during high tide. So, of course, we still have a lot of unanswered questions about how this happened. Right now, the tide is now lower and the plane is resting on the sand. The cleanup process and investigation is now underway. I did see a gentleman with the FAA arrive here on scene. I spoke to members of the U.S. Coast Guard who were called in to check on fuel that could have spilled in the water during the landing. They told me it's a non-issue at the moment and the Coast Guard isn't needed. They say cleanup will be handled by California State Parks from here on out. I do know there's a tractor in the parking lot waiting for the tide to recede so it can go down there and get the plane off the beach so the investigation can continue. For any further updates, you can head to CBS8.com. I'm Dana Marie McNichol coming to you from Carlsbad. Thanks, Dana. Still ahead tonight, a local animal rescue gets some help tonight with its high sdg &E bill, but it still needs your help. You're okay, sweetheart. You're okay. Good for the spot. Plus, newly released video of a baby rescued from a stolen car and how the heroes who saved her are now being recognized. We are looking at a chance for some light showers tonight, also even potentially some mountain snow. King tides are set to return to the forecast, and we're going to dry out tomorrow all the way into next week. Your complete forecast is coming up. And up next, a look back at the turbulent life of a rock music icon.